Hey guys, welcome to Blue Marble Science. Pseudoscience, anyone? <laughs> oh yeah. Anthony Riley is at it again, this time with the help of a lab coat, a dissolved solids water tester, an egg, and some salt. Sleeping Warrior is going to prove that density points in the wrong direction. Hey, don't worry about those oven mitts. I think you're going to be laughing too hard to hurt yourself this time. Hey, Gladys. You ready? Uh -huh. Kick that thing over and let's get going. Anthony is still trying to teach us the scientific method while at the same time being unable to understand the difference in dissolved solids and density. I don't know. Maybe you don't need to know anything about science to talk about science. I'll tell you what. Let's just uh, watch this train wreck unfold. Here's, here's a fun question for Riley. What's denser, an egg or water? If all that matters is relative density, then the egg should sink. Funny you should ask that question. Today's video, we'll be doing a little bit of science and we will be observing how we can manipulate the medium by changing the density and create a force. Newton said, where there is an acceleration, a force must be present. Well, that's sort of what he said. Um, continue. Today's video is all about science. But first some context from a science denier with a counter to my claims from a recent video of mine. The self-proclaimed physics degree undergraduate makes a claim and gets it totally wrong. Let's consider his words carefully. This guy claims to be a man of science, but doesn't know what the cause is in an experiment. Neither does Geo Whisperer. Quality between the density uh, of the egg equal to the density of the medium it's in. But what Nora says is he equates cause with that which one manipulates. Well, your independent variable is the variable that is manipulated by the researcher in an experiment. It is the presumed cause. Stop. Uh, the reason he's talking about this is again is because uh, they hasn't mentioned it here, but I think in this experiment, this video, they actually poured the salt in. So I think he's claiming you can change the density of the medium, and therefore that is the cause or his independent variable is how much salt you poured in. He hasn't mentioned this, of course, but I think that's actually what he's trying to get at. I mean, I know it seems insane what he's saying here about you, you've got the, you have the control of the density, and he's, but he actually means that that's because he's been pouring salt into it or not. Yeah, exactly. You obviously do have the control over the density, but where's the connection from that to density is the force? Yeah, I mean, just there's, there's exactly no relation there. Exactly, it's just gone off wildly into this quantum eraser dogmatic dogma land where they prefer to live about independent dependent variables, and so he's just trying to prove forces because there's an effect as a result of changing the independent variable, i.e., the thing that is the cause in his mind. Although, of course, he doesn't like the idea of any the cause has more than one factor because, of course, you've got the density of the um, the 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 liquid, you've got the force of gravity. In other words, there are multiple factors, and he can't cope with that. Like Nathan doesn't understand the an effect is the result of more than one or one more one more than one factor that's very true but i'm not sure anthony's going to be able to understand it quite frequently in fact most of the time you've got more than one variable that can affect uh, uh, the outcome and when you have multiple variables it's, it's just important that you hold all but one of them uh, constant and hopefully you have guessed correctly, and the one that you're varying is the one that will have the most effect. But when you've got multiple variables, you're pretty much obligated to test each one of them independently. And as long as all, all other things are held constant, and you only vary one thing, you can determine what the uh, effect of that is. Now in this particular case, we understand very well that this will not work in microgravity. So you cannot ignore gravity. That has got to be tested at some point. In order for this to be a very, uh, uh, in order for this to be a valid experiment, uh, at this point, Anthony bangs on and on about the scientific uh, method, and I'll just save us some time and speed up the video. What Anthony is doing here is going through ten different citations about the scientific method, a la the uh, Nathan Oakley School of Science for Retards. Um, 
and pointing out that the independent variable is the variable you change. Yes, yes, we understand all of that, Anthony. The problem is you know, your very narrow definition of the independent variable. You can use a lot of different things as independent variables, and you don't necessarily have to change them yourself. For instance, in the, in the experiment you're about to do, you don't have to add salt. You could sit and wait and let Mother Nature concentrate that solution for you simply by letting some of the water evaporate. That's the reason why we can use time, we can use age, we can use a lot of things for independent variables. Well, thankfully in scientific method we do have other treatments, it's called scientific method. So it's only where you do not have any other treatment can you infer cause, but thankfully we do, we have scientific method. Warning, liquid alert. If you're drinking anything at the moment, swallow now. This is an egg. This is a parts per million counter. <laughs> I know you guys thought I'd been playing around with Photoshop. No, no, not at all. Now tell the truth, Anthony, you lost a bit, didn't you? That's what happened, had to. <laughs> I mean, nobody's gonna get me to put on that uh, outfit at gunpoint. Anyway, <laughs> you, you, you didn't do bad. One out of two. Uh, I mean, you got the egg right. The instrument you're holding is actually a dissolved solids uh, meter. It's really a conductivity meter. It doesn't measure particulate, as you're about to try to tell us. It measures dissolved solids like mm, salt. Inspired by Jaron's most recent video, if you haven't checked it out, go to his channel, and it's called something like How and Why I Drink Distilled Water. Um, he used one of these and he measured the amount of particulates per million in his tap water. I decided that I could apply what he used, this little bit of technology, not science, this is technology. I could apply this technology and I could perform a practical scientific experiment where I could measure the density of a medium, in this case water, and I can make this egg move all by itself with just a little bit of salt. I can observe my phenomena to be that some objects appear to float, some objects appear to sink, some objects will suspend in different mediums. My hypothesis is if I change the medium's density, the egg will move. Newton said if an object moves, a force is present. My null hypothesis is that if I change the, if I change the density of the medium, the egg will not move. I will activate one of the hypotheses. My independent variable, my presumed cause that I must manipulate in an experiment, is the density of the medium. My dependent variable is the movement of the egg. I will also try and keep everything else constant. The volumes of water, not no change, just the density of the medium. Let's see how I'm going to do this. This is my egg. This is my parts per million counter. This is gonna measure the parts per million of both these fluids. This is tap water, regular tap water. That is the same tap water, but it's been preloaded to save some time with some salt from this to give it a density variation. It's gonna measure the density of the, the tap water. Well, you're gonna have a problem here, Anthony. You're not going to be able to measure the specific gravity of the water with a dissolved solids analyzer. You need a hydrometer for that. A hydrometer looks like this. It is a calibrated buoyant device that allows you to read the specific gravity of a fluid. Now you could call it relative density if you like. A better term for it is specific gravity. But a bigger question is if you don't know what these instruments are, what they do or how to use them, is this what you would call pseudoscience? So while it settles down, it takes a little bit of time. Okay, that's coming in at 212 parts per million tap water. Don't know what that means. It's just a number. It could be unicorn farts. It's just a tap. It's just a number. So 212 is the recorded density of this one. Mind you, I should have showed that to the camera, shouldn't I? 
coming in at 214 now. So if you, if you want to zoom in on that, it says 214 parts per million. Okay. Back to zero. When I do it to this one, this one is saying this is 302 parts per million. Again, if you want to zoom into that, you can have a look. Okay. So basically 200 to 300. Let's try this one again. Yeah, it's about 200, then this one's about 300. Yeah, so it's 200 and 300, right? So one's got 100 more parts per million than the other. That tells me that there is a density variation between the two. So what we're going to do is we're going to see what happens when this egg is dropped into here. It sinks and it's touching the floor. Let's take the egg out. Now we'll see what happens when we put it into a more dense medium. So whilst that's settling down, this was done last night because it takes ages for it to dissolve and it um, get to a point where it's saturated. And I've got some residue at the bottom that is salt. Um, so at the bottom at least it's getting relatively saturated. So I'm going to give it a stir to stir it up so that the uh, it evenly distributes a little bit better. Because what I'm hoping to do is get the egg so that it's just sat above the bottom of the thing. Some people will argue and complain and say that I've not, I shouldn't have stirred it, I should have left it as a gradient. It doesn't really matter. Because what we're trying to establish is, if the medium is different, does it make a displacement? Does it force a displacement? If it forces a displacement, according to Newton, there is force. This is just normal table salt from your favorite supermarket. Other supermarkets are available. We can tell that the density of the egg is equal to the part in the glass where the, the liquid is. What I'm now gonna try and prove is that if I change the density of the medium, I will cause the, the uh, effect by adding salt. So if I can change it, because I'm manipulating, I'm the experimenter and I'm manipulating my presumed cause my independent variable is the medium. If that egg moves, I've caused it. We know the parts per million is about 300. All we need to do is pour some of this in. Hey, what do you know? The egg's immediately moved. Didn't have to wait for that, did we? So, what's the explanation? Well, I'm gonna measure this now. This isn't gonna be much more above 300. However, if it reads anything above 300, then that'll do for me. How do I reset? There we go. So the density is reading around about 309, 308, 309. You can have a look at that on the camera if you want to zoom in. But I've just made the egg move. So what's the cause? Well, scientific method states that the independent variable is the presumed cause and I presumed that changing the density of the liquid would with salt would cause a displacement. Newton's first law of motion states that um, every object will remain at rest unless acted upon by a force and I've obviously created a force. The density of the medium has displaced the egg, the egg moved, that's an accelerated mass so therefore Newton states that there is a force. I caused it with this so in scientific, in scientific method, the cause of the displacement is this. I've caused it. I've manipulated it. I added the salt. It caused something. I did it. I'm within scientific method. Here's where all this falls apart, Anthony. You make an unfounded, unproven assertion that density is a force, when in fact it's simply an observable characteristic of matter, and it's no different than color, odor, taste, or texture. You presume the only possible reason for the egg to remain suspended was density, when in fact we're talking about buoyancy, which is dependent on gravity to work in the first place. 
What you're doing is committing and affirming the consequent logical fallacy. You actually demonstrated the egg falling up to a region of lower density when everything in the atmosphere falls in the opposite direction. How can you explain that? And you can't provide any method of prediction that would tell us the magnitude or direction of your supposed density force. The measured demonstrated effects of gravity explain all of this. Density can't explain any of it, nor can it produce a force, and the effect you demonstrate only works within a gravitational field. By omitting the effect of gravity, you're simply begging the question. Density is a physical property of matter, nothing more. Trying to suggest otherwise is simple intellectual dishonesty and pure bullshit. Well, <clears throat> stay in school, kids, unless you want to end up like these two guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey, Gladys. We're out of here.